The Silica Food Science Center, a leading contract research organization and part of Meru Nutrisciences Corporation, is pleased to announce the opening of our North American Foodborne Virus Detection Laboratory. Our newest 75,000 square foot USA location, opened in September 2012, included the footprint for a molecular biology laboratory dedicated to assisting the food industry to address the virus challenge. Now this space is being put to good use with the opening of the virus laboratory. As Wendy McMahon, general manager of the Food Science Center put it, with the ongoing advent of new methods and technologies in virus detection, we are continuously expanding our services to meet the needs of industry worldwide. What prompted us to invest in this new service offering? Was this simply a response to recent outbreaks caused by norovirus and hepatitis A? While there have been some high profile outbreaks caused by foodborne viruses, the rationale for our investment is more complex. A convergence of several factors led to this investment. First, beyond the high profile outbreaks are many, many, many small outbreaks. Viruses are a leading cause of foodborne poisonings in the United States, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. CDC estimates foodborne viruses account for almost 50% of the outbreaks. Annually, norovirus causes about 21 million illnesses and contributes to about 70,000 hospitalizations and 800 deaths. Secondly, our regulatory agencies have become more active in working to address the threat. FDA initiated a risk assessment in collaboration with Health Canada for shellfish. The FDA BAM's newest method is focused on detecting hepatitis A in foods. And the USDA, through their National Institute of Food and Agriculture, provided $25 million in grant funding to start the NoraCore project in 2011. NoraCore, led by Dr. Leanne Jacobs from North Carolina State University, is a collaborative effort including more than 30 groups from academia, industry, and government. Silica is a stakeholder. The goal is to strengthen food safety by studying hum human norovirus across the food supply chain in an effort to design effective control measures and reduce the number of virus-caused foodborne illnesses. So given the scope of the issue, the more proactive regulatory stance and funding, as well as the progress made by NoraCore since 2011, we felt the time was right to develop our method expertise. Fortunately, there have also been advances in technology which make extraction and detection easier than in the past. A technical working group in Europe came together and drafted two ISO methods, one for qualitative analysis and one for quantitative analysis, publishing them in 2013. We follow the ISO method 15216. Our European scientists began implementing this methodology, first in one of our French laboratories and more recently in one of our Italian laboratories near Venice. In January of this year, we announced our foodborne virus laboratory in Italy, and then in June in our Chicago metro area facility, both offering the ISO methodology to our customers. Which foodborne viruses are now offered by Silica? Let's spend a few minutes talking about norovirus and hepatitis A. We can detect these two viruses in a range of food, water, and environmental samples. While we utilize similar methodologies for detection, norovirus and hepatitis A are quite different from each other. Norovirus causes an acute but generally short-term gastrointestinal illness with a quick onset, while hepatitis A causes liver disease with a much longer onset period. Humans become immune to hepatitis A once exposed, while humans are not able to develop long-lasting immunity to norovirus. The country of origin is also a risk factor to be considered for hepatitis A. In many parts of the world, the majority of the population is immune to hepatitis A. With more global sourcing of foods and ingredients, contaminated products which reach the rest of the world, where the percentage of immunity to hepatitis A is very low, can cause outbreaks. 
Dried fruit and nuts imported from countries in northern Africa or Turkey have been implicated in hepatitis A outbreaks. Both viral agents can be transmitted via the same routes, ingestion of contaminated food, water, or direct contact with viral particles spread by an infected person. Since viruses have been shown to survive for up to six weeks on surfaces, transmission also occurs by touching a contaminated surface. Now let's spend a few minutes reviewing the analytical challenge of detecting foodborne viruses. Viruses are very different from bacteria as shown in this chart. The main analytical implication comes from the fact that viral particles are not actually living. There is no potential to enrich them. So the detection method is highly dependent upon the ability to extract and concentrate the viral particles from the food matrix. Currently, we utilize a three-step process in our laboratory. Step one is the critical extraction and concentration of viral particles from the sample. In the example shown, moistened swabs are used to sample potentially contaminated environmental surfaces. The addition of the mango virus is an important quality parameter, which will provide the extraction efficiency for each sample. Secondly, the viral capsid or protein jacket must be broken. The protein jacket protects the virus strand from destruction and degradation. Then the RNA must be extracted. Currently, we utilize a method that ab absorbs the RNA onto silica particles. The RNA is then concentrated and washed for the PCR detection. Reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction technology, or RT-PCR, is used to detect selected sets of base pairs for each target virus. The ISO method specifies the specific target nucleotides for two major genotypes of norovirus. With RT-PCR, the detection limit of norovirus G1 and G2, as well as hepatitis A, is 1 to 10 copies, depending on the quality of the RNA purification from the food matrix. We offer both norovirus and hepatitis A testing with a five-day turnaround time. Secondary screening and confirmatory testing is also available. Since detection is dependent on extraction and concentration of any viral particles present, there are method customization steps for each matrix type. Food products, water, and even shellfish have their own specific protocols. As with any of our silica analytical methods, we have instituted specific quality parameters. For foodborne virus testing, we utilize several types of process controls, including a negative process control, a mango virus positive process control, and an internal amplification control, which verifies that each channel of the multiplex PCR assay is working properly. The mango virus process control, spiked into all samples, is used to determine the extraction efficiency because the extraction efficiency is target dependent. How can the industry move forward to prevent foodborne viral outbreaks? We endorse a holistic approach including risk assessment, country of origin for high risk foods, as well as some measurement of the risk via surveillance testing and finally evaluation of food processing impact. To this end, we completed a preliminary study on sampling tools for surface detection of viruses and plan to continue with additional investigation. Food process inactivation studies are also a growing area of interest. Determining what prevention measures and sanitation protocols will work well against viruses is another focus area. Currently, hand washing is still the best known defense. Hand sanitizers are controversial since many have limited efficacy against viruses. In the food processing environment, sodium hypochlorite solutions may be needed in higher concentrations than those typically used in order to inactivate the virus particles. In working to meet industry needs, the Silica Foodborne Virus Detection Laboratory enables more effective prevention, surveillance, training, and control strategies. We look forward to working with our clients and collaborators to reduce the virus risk.